which certainly means that these Ethiopia, especially, but these Horn of African nations have a very powerful chip vis-a-vis -vis the United States, vis-a-vis -vis Europe, uh, the traditional colonial imperial powers, because they have the ability to really use their green power potential in order to turn themselves into, in the same way you see countries that have a lot of oil are able to leverage, leverage that, they'd be able to leverage green uh, power potential. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which is one of the main reasons that this conflict is even happening for many reasons. It's created a huge conflict between Ethiopia and Egypt. But the important point here is that it's going to be one of the largest hydropower projects on the planet. And it has the possibility to create huge amounts of clean energy, 100% clean energy that can help Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, you know, even Uganda and Kenya, Sudan and South Sudan all raise the level of development of their people in the context of not being able to, uh, in the context of not contributing to climate change. And why is that potentially dangerous? Well, in the context of co uh, carbon markets and, you know, the glo overall global push towards clean, uh, clean energy, it creates a huge strategic advantage for Ethiopia and surrounding nations to be able to say, well, you can put stuff in our country that, you know, factories, whatever, that will be 100% clean energy, and you can use that from the point of view of carbon offsets, which certainly means that these Ethiopia especially, but these Horn of African nations have a very powerful chip vis-a-vis -vis the United States, vis-a-vis -vis Europe, uh, the traditional colonial imperial powers, because they have the ability to really use their green power potential in order to turn themselves into, in the same way you see countries that have a lot of oil are able to leverage, leverage that, they'd be able to leverage green uh, power potential. And I think in and of itself, the West doesn't want to give anyone a chip that could potentially give them some level of control in the economic space, give them some level of influence with major corporations in the Western sphere that control the politics and so on and so forth. So that's one major issue is the emergence of Ethiopia and perhaps the broader region as a clean power hub, which sounds counterintuitive because all these imperialist countries say they want to do something about climate change. But the last thing they want to do is have nations of the global South be empowered over, and we see this with Bolivia and the issue of the batteries. I mean, we can see it all around the world, how developing nations that are willing to act independently, that have a lot of potential green power potential, that the U.S. targets them for regime change because they don't want them to control um, major choke points of the new, hopefully sustainable green 21st century economy on a global scale. So that's one.